So, decided to get me a laptop. You know these things run hot because we got a lot of power and a little space. Doing some Googling, how do you cool it down? They say get a cooling uh, pad. That'll help the laptop cool down. Doing some reviews. Some note that don't help very well, but I thought when I do a Google, and one of the top ones is this Cotex one. Notes that this is Cotex, really? Cotex? Yeah. Cotex one. Uh, it is supposed to be one of the best ones, 30 bucks on Amazon. Totally worth trying. And then I get it, and it's comical. I was like, are you kidding me? It's not moving any air. You can see it's hovering air, but of course when I go to use it, it doesn't help at all. I mean, I might as well just raise it up. This thing can't even move any air. What's the point? So I think, you know what? I, I need a real fan that moves some air. And based on my reviews, I wasn't finding anything that would work well. So then it enters in my custom made one. So what we have here is uh, made this from walnut. I don't know why Mr. X17 is ramping up in uh, temp, but he's thinking about stuff. Uh, this is made from uh, walnut. Got six uh, NF A12 uh, 120 millimeter fans. Uh, it's currently set at 50%. It sits around 44 when I stop talking, about 44 decibel, and I would say that it's practically noiseless. And at 50%, clearly you can see it does so much better at moving air. So I know we see a lot of tests online showing that cooling pads don't help, but I wanted to know the real truth. Does it actually help uh, when it's actually having air moved over it, whether it's at this quiet, like right now, um, I've got the X17 going uh, on its dedicated graphics card with the MUX switch on, and so it is, and 4K, so it's always got a fan going because that thing is running a little bit of heat, and it's already louder than this at 50%. Obviously, I've got more over here. I've got a controller, and I can crank it up to even uh, more air, and that can move, can basically blow anything around. If this isn't going to be enough to cool a laptop down or be useful, then I don't think anything is other than a big fan on top. Um, ideally, with the inverted motherboard of the X17, it would actually be better to put air on top of it, but really couldn't come up with a design around what's going on. So this can be my kind of overview of how this works. It can be a couple parts. I'm going to go over to another uh, view, and I'm going to cut for a second and kind of show you. I'm going to do a first real-world test to see if it cools, uh, talk a little bit about just the overall design of this, and then kind of go into the woodworking. So if you get bored at any point to see the results, uh, just tune up then. All right, we're down in my office, going to do the final test. I've got the computer set up on the air cooler. Uh, currently, the fans are off. Nothing's going. I've been having a video game kind of sitting idling in the background for the last 30 or so minutes. That way, I can get it nice up to temp, and then once I turn the fans on, we'll see if a cooling laptop or a cooling pad uh, makes any impact. So you'll see here... My temps uh, over the last bit have been set pretty solid uh, at 71 across the board. Make sure that's nice and focused for everyone. All right. And we'll see that the GPU has kind of been setting at 1470. I've got a slight overclock of only like 40 and 38. I don't want to push anything hard and have a crash and stuff like that. So uh, for some time, it's been set and locked. I think I see a max of 72, so it must have bumped up to 72 degrees. Uh, fans are going to the performance setting, but if we flip flip over, um, you can't see that they're all sitting. It's 97, 100, 92, and 100 on fan speed. So we'll see the fan speeds are up pretty strong. Uh, so I'm hoping to see something pretty consistent here. Uh, well, not consistent. I'm hoping to see uh, some results. So I'm going to turn the fans on. And I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it 50% juice. I probably should just turn it up till the sound is louder than the laptop say that's it about there so um, I'm feeling you know out the sides out the back there's a ton more uh, air flow I can feel the heat uh, coming off through that so I'm hoping we're seeing some cooling initially we're seeing no drop in temp um, we're sitting at 71 yeah well yeah we're still sitting at 71 um, and obviously the GPU, if it gets some uh, temperature headroom, it's going to try to adjust up uh, clock speeds. So we can watch, see if the clock speeds do anything with time. Um, well, it kind of popped down to 70, so consistently 70, that's nice, a little bit of a help. And there's a slight downward trend, so I think maybe <laughs> we got one uh, degree improvement so far. 
Um, I'm going to let this go a little bit longer so you can sit here and watch it, and I'll pop back in if it's changed over a period of time. All right, coming back, looking at where we're at. Um, it looks like we've settled in at around 68C. You'll see we're sitting at 71 very consistently. And then when I look here, we are at uh, 68. Um, I'm actually seeing we're getting some higher clock speeds too. Like over here, um, we're bouncing around, topping out at 15. We were sitting at 14. Yeah, it's right here. We were sitting at 1470, 1500, uh, 1485, tickled 15,000. We're now here, we're getting consistently. You know, actually getting up to 15, 15 a little bit, so I'd say slightly consistently higher, and I'm, I'm assuming that has to just do with the cooler uh, clock that's it's allowing to boost it uh, a little bit more. I think we flatlined right here. I don't expect any more. Uh, taking a look at the speed setting, I actually have these set up. I don't think I mentioned this, but this is all these fans are being controlled by one USB plug. These are the five volt Noctuas, so they're all being connected and just daisy chained off the the power uh, USB with the new Gen 3, uh, it's powerful enough to actually uh, power three, uh, six of these fans without issue. So I think there's your result. Um, with six Noctuas blowing on the bottom of an inverted motherboard, I think with a normal motherboard setup, you'd get better benefit. Uh, but this is inverted. Obviously, if I could get some air across the top, that'd be ideal, but I'm just not a good enough uh, woodworker yet to make a scoop that would turn the air and turn it up and it would add size to this. I'm not sure. So there's your results. Um, does it help a little bit? Uh, yes, uh, definitely cooled it down three more degrees. You'll see that's uh, quite clear. Um, and honestly, it keeps me cooler. I think it actually cools me more than anything. The air coming up the side of this is where kind of my hands and arms might sit. And um, this is not like having a hot laptop on your lap anymore. Um, this just feels like you have cool air. So if anything, it's going to help me if I'm sitting with this on my lap on the couch or even sitting here. Um, fan noise, obviously. Oh, and I don't think we looked at this, but the, the fans uh, that are going, they have not changed the same. They are noting they are 97, uh, 100, 90 to 100. So it looks like the fan curve did not impact this uh, at all uh, when it comes to the results we're seeing as it relates to this. So uh, do, do cooling uh, uh, pads help? Yes, uh, but only if they're moving a lot of air, at least on the X17. Yeah, I think that 68 is pretty consistent. We're locked in there uh, pretty well. And it looks like we may have lost some of the advantage we are seeing down in the uh, clocks. I think that's kind of bottomed out a little bit. So a quick review of the overall kind of design, what I was going for here. here. It's not anything uh, crazy when it comes to the basic setup of a cooling laptop. Got your fans below. Uh, you got the deck of the bottom deck of the laptop sitting here. Uh, what I want to do is be as efficient with the airflow and how it works. So I want the air obviously to flow up, hit the bottom of the laptop and then channel out the sides. The more space I can put up here, uh, the better because that'll just allow for more volume of airflow. Um, if you look at the sides here, designed here, this is just thick enough to be the thickness of the fans. The idea is air gets kind of sucked in here, sucked in the back. Uh, they're going to blow up and channel out uh, on the sides and try to get as much air over the bottom. Obviously, it's no cooling effect. You know, there's no like vents or anything on the bottom, but we know heat just kind of radiates throughout the whole laptop. So any uh, cooling, I'm hoping, will have some benefit for the overall. Uh, designing this, you know, see here, you'll see the, the bottom of the X17 has little ridges. So they're designed to kind of sit and lock into place. Uh, when I was kind of putting this together, the design was constantly changing. I wanted kind of an elevated back. Um, I wanted the front to be solid because that'll probably be if I'm sitting on my lap up against my stomach. There's a little gap for air, but not a ton. I was more thinking it's going to get air from the back, more air towards the back of the case, just because that's uh, closer where the CPU and GPU will be, so that'll be beneficial, but obviously uh, more air flowing here. So you'll have the same kind of gaps here and here when the laptop is uh, setting on it. Um, this is the main part to hold uh, the fans. You'll see that I've got to do pretty thin here so I can actually get screws that go through it. These are actually still fan screws. If I could have gotten longer ones, I probably could have gone uh, deeper with that. But then I have this you know, thicker part here for support and weight. Same here. 
Um, if I had designed it right, you'll see I have to make these little lips here to actually set the laptop on. Uh, I don't know with the spacing, because I have a little gap between the fans, if I actually could have got them close enough for it to rest here. That was my original design, and then realized, oh wait, it's not going to work. Uh, so I made these to kind of hold it, and they work pretty well. Um, I'm going to get it there. They're blocking a little bit of the air, uh, but that's okay. All right, so these top three were here, designed just to hold the fans up. This bar here is kind of the main support. The original design was just going to be this top part and this part. And it'd sit in my lap, and I realized it was kind of laying a little flat. I wanted to raise it up more. I tried to do it this thickness and this thickness, but I wanted it raised up even more. So I added this back bar, um, which runs across the back here. Uh, and I realized that when I was sitting in my lap and trying to use it, it was still falling down, and I was getting dangerously close to that hitting my lap. So I decided to add this here, and I just kept adding uh, new things as I went along as I was making mistakes. I'm new to woodworking. I've only done like tabletops and cutting boards and a couple little other pieces, but they've not been anywhere this intricate. I've never used screws before or making holes for screws. Um, these actually were held in originally by screws, and you see I just went with uh, pegs to kind of cover it because I was actually shearing off pieces. I was just learning a lot, but it's, you know, that's what uh, you have a hobby that you're learning things in. I also was trying these new, um, using router bits to kind of do this uh, kind of rolled versus a hard flat piece, rounded all the edges off because they were uh, perfectly square when I had started. And uh, yeah, d different things. It was uh, a lot of fun. It's like a lot of projects. It starts off with ideas and it changes as you go along. Um, trying to think of anything other about it. It's walnut. Um, you can make this if you want. It's real easy to do in the sense of coming up with the, the materials for it. Uh, these are actually leftovers from making cutting boards. And you can buy that at any local like wood shop, like uh, um, Woodcraft or something like that. They have literally boards that are these exact dimensions that if you then cut to size, you can make work. Uh, all the other work I did with a router, a DeWalt router, cost about 230 bucks on Amazon and a couple bits. You don't have to go crazy on the bits and just time and patience. The finish is General Finishes Armor Seal. I like this finish a lot. I used it on my desk. I really like it. It's waterproof. It doesn't let you leave any uh, stains, uh, but it also does a really good job of showing the figure. It kind of gives a nice reflective almost when you seal, see any like epoxy finishes. Uh, here though, I'm not sure if I like how shiny it is. I really intended to do two or three layers of this clear and then a matte to finish it off, but by the time I was done with the third coat here, it was actually getting so thick that if I did any more, it might start looking a little fake like fake wood and I don't want to push it past that so um, I might at a later point come back and sand it off to do it uh, a little bit better so uh, this is how it looks I'm really happy with the results though so you can see that figure like right here a lot of people like to bash the Noctua and their brown color but this build it was a no-brainer uh, best fan company one that comes to performance and this brown and gray uh, tan just work perfectly between the combination of the, the walnut wood for the main part as well as using uh, maple um, rods to kind of affix them there so uh, and again I know that I like the I like the owls I think they're awesome having the six owls staring you down cool silent So here's some of the figure on the front piece, kind of picked one of the nicer ones I had to cover it. I love walnut, it has a beautiful figure, it's a nice rich warm color. Thanks for watching, that wraps up this video. Uh, watch out for the next video is going to be the liquid metal video. All right. Well, have a great one, everyone. Bye.